All right, welcome back, you crazy cats. Today we're going to talk about day two, or today is the second day, or really part two of our trust calculations as we expand what we've been doing. Up until this point, we've been working with the external forces or the reactionary forces. Today we're going to start talking about the forces inside. And that really means we're going to deal with compression, intention. All right, so let's start talking about this then. Okay, what it's really called here is, what we're talking about here is method of joints. And what this means is we're going to look at really one joint at a time. So I'm going to come back to this here in a second. Okay, so what I've done here is I've added numbers that we'd already calculated a few days ago. We knew that RAY and RCY were 350 and 150 because these two had to add up to what the 500 pounds um, heading in the opposite direction. We'd also learned that RAX was equal to zero because it was the only thing heading in the X direction. Okay, method of joints, internal forces. We're going to use so cosine and sine to determine X and Y vector components. A couple things. We're going to assume all members to be in tension. A positive answer will mean the member is in tension, and a negative number will mean the member is in compression. As forces are solved, update our free body diagrams. Use correct mag magnitudes and cents for subsequent joint free body diagrams. Okay, first thing we do is we've got to use the dimensions on our um, uh, triangle to help us find these missing sides. And what we're talking about, this right here, is this part of the triangle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find theta. And I'm going to use tangent here. Tangent, this is my opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So I'm going to use the inverse tangent to find um, theta. And we would say theta is equal to the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, or theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 4 over 3. Theta, in this case, turns out to be 25.3 degrees. Now, some of you might be using your calculators and calculus, whatever else. Make sure that you are in degrees, not radians. <clears throat> so, let's go back and plug this in. This, we know then, is 25.3 degrees. Now we're going to find theta 2. All right. Again, I'm going to use opposite. This here's my opposite side and adjacent. I've just gotten used to drawing a line out, and the line coming out of the angle is always the opposite side. So theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of 4 over 7. And theta in this case turns out to be 10.9, I'm going to say. We'll round it up to 10.9 degrees. So let's go back to our picture. And this here then is 10.9 degrees. All right. So as you can see here, I've put 10.9 degrees in for theta 2. The next thing we're going to do here then is we're going to make a free body diagram of the um, truss, but we're not going to put in uh, the middle parts of the truss par trusses here. So we're going to leave um, out some really big sides here. Now they're saying this is 29.745 degrees. I need to go back and check my work here. And they're saying this is 53 degrees. Let's see what I did wrong. Okay, what I forgot to do here on my calculator is I punched in tangent to or the inverse tangent and I said 4 divided by 7. What I needed to do was put it in parentheses. And that would have given me my correct answer. I forgot to um, put 4 divided by 7 in parentheses. So at this time, please change your angles to these correct angles of 53.13 and 29.745 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So what I've done is I've went ahead and made my free body diagram just like they did. I've went ahead and made it 53 degrees and, 20, and my angle over here 30 degrees, but other than that, it's exactly the same. 
Now, where to begin? Choose the joint that has the least number of unknowns. Um, reaction forces at joints A and C are both good choices to begin our calculations. Um, I need to go back and change this. I wrote these in the wrong spot. Okay, come on, let me erase it. Slight difficulty there. At least it didn't shut off and me lose everything I did, which I thought is what I was going to do. <clears throat> okay, so they're saying um, A and C are both good choices. I might go over here to C because I've got the least number of vectors. Um, I've got two unknowns. Um, let's start off here with... Um, I'm going to start off here solving for BC. And what we're going to find out here is whether or not BC is in compression or tension. All right. So what I'm going to do here then is specifically draw just this one right here. I'm going to isolate this one and look at just it. So I've got C right here, and that's what we call BC. And then this over here would be, because it's heading to D, we call this CD. And we know that this one right here is 150. And this is a 30 degree angle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start to use our forces. We know that the forces inside this bridge have to be equal to zero. So what I'm going to start off by saying here is that the sum of the forces in the x direction, the sum of the forces in the x direction have to be equal to zero. And um, uh, I can't start off with the X. And the reason why is BC has components that's both X and Y. If we look at BC, this is BC here. BC has components that are both in the X direction, and it has components that's in the Y direction. So if I do CD, I, it's not just CD that's heading in the X direction. BC also is in the X direction, but I don't know either one of them. What I do know is I have one value here that's in the Y direction, which I know, and BC's Y component has to be counteracting that. So I'm going to start by saying the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. And what that tells me then is this is RCY, is that zero is equal to, now this y component right here would be BC sine of theta. If you remember this from just a few days ago, we were splitting things into their x and y components, and to find the y component, we said use your hypotenuse times the sine of theta. And the x component down here is going to be BC cosine of theta. If you can remember this, this is going to be a whole lot easier for you. Some of the forces in the y direction, then. So I'm going to say BC sine of 30 plus RCY. Those two combined have to be equal to, to 0. Well, I know RCY is 150. So 0 equals BC sine of 30 plus 150. Take it to the other side, I get negative 150 equals BC sine of 30. I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 30. And that's going to tell me what BC is equal to. BC turns out to be equal to negative 300. All right. So I would go back to my drawing over here. And I'm going to put 300 in here. Now what I want to show you here is, now they use 29.7, so they get negative 302. But negative 302 and negative 300 are essentially the same thing. So what this tells us is this negative value tells us that it's under compression, all right? It's being pushed together. BC is under compression. What we want to do, though, is because we assume all members are under tension, we put it back up here as a positive number. We put it in as 302.33 pounds. We want to make sure, remember, that it's negative 302, but in the diagram, we're going to put it as 302. 
So now, I've done the sum of the forces in the y direction. So that told me what BC was. Now I'm going to use my sum of the forces in the x direction to tell me what DC is. So now I'm going to draw a picture specifically. Oh, I got it right here. I don't have to draw it. You draw it. My sum of the forces in the x direction. are going to be equal to zero. Well, what are the vectors in the x direction? I'm not going to use RCY. RCY is heading up and down, so it does has, has no x component. CD has an x component. I'm going to say zero equals CD. Plus, now BC has an x component, and that's BC cosine of theta, or BC cosine of 30. In this case, I know what BC is, so I'm going to go ahead and put negative 300 times the cosine of 30 in here. So 0 equals CD plus 259.8, or I could have just said 260 for our math. That tells us then that CD is going to be equal to check that this would be negative because BC was negative so negative 300 cosine of 30 gives me negative 259.8 when I put that in here then CD is equal to 259.8 so that tells me over here then if I go back to my original picture here we go that this would be 260 I'm just going to put it there now what we would keep doing then is finding those forces in both the x and y directions for every other one. Um, okay, I'm going to stop right there. We're getting pretty far into our video here today, so I hope that gets you started. I'll catch you guys on the flip side.